Hello everyone and welcome. So I've been modeling this building in Odini for a few days and for the most part is done procedurally. And in this video, I will be sharing a few tips that I learned along the way. So yeah, let's get into it. So let's start with the Brickify setup of the dome. So I believe it's in here. I start with the base, which is just a sweep node with eight divisions and with the profile adjusted. Then I'm scattering quite a few points because I need to do this with points so I can easily uh, do over an eye fracture and create the, the bricks or the divisions. So I'm scattering quite a few points. Then I'm dividing that into layers so I can come in here, change the amount of layers. So the way I'm doing that is by um, defining the amount of layers first, then get the bounding box min and the bounding box max. From that I can also get the height that I can uh, divide by the amount of layers and for that I get the layer height, so the section in here, the gap. Then I'm also calculating, a, I'm also creating a layer attribute so I can have 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And from that I can just manipulate or modulate the position dot y, so the y position of the points. And I start at the bounding box mean, then add the layer, so 0, 1, 2, and so on, and scale it by the layer height, so that we calculated in here. And then we get this sort of look, we get these sections. And it will always snap to the, to the bounding box max. Then I'm fusing the points, but then right now they are too, too uniform, so like they are relaxed. And I want them randomized along the, the Y position. So I want them offset it from each other. So it creates that typical look. In here, I'm just um, snapping this to the surface. So, we so to make sure they are on the surface. So in order to have that random offset in here, I am sorting the points along uh, uh, in a circular way. This is this is not the uh, typical sort. This is labs sort, so not the default one. That has this option to do circular, circular sorting. And I'm sorting them, adding and converting to line, so I can sample the U position, the intrinsic UVs of these curves, and that's what I'm doing here. First, uh, using the XYZ list first to find the prim and the UV coordinates, and then I'm creating a random layer, a random float value with the layer as a seed. Uh, for the position, I'm taking the U components of the intrinsic UVs from these curves, adding an offset and the random offset that I created in here. Then just make sure to modulo to one so we can easily uh, wrap around the points. And then just updating the position with the prim UV and sampling that U, U position of the intrinsic UVs. I hope that makes sense. It is quite um, an headache to wrap our heads around. So yeah, that's basically how I did uh, the, the fracturing. Uh, how I did the Brickify setup. In here I'm just dividing these into layers and then in here is where I'm doing the the different bricks. As you can see if we didn't offset them, well they still look okay but I wanted a more randomized look and, and to control the, the seed so I did this in here. And uh, we need to do this in stages so taking each layer and Voronoi fracturing, otherwise we would get unpredictable results. So yeah, that's how I'm doing the Brickify setup. So now I wanted to share how I created this shape in here, which can be a bit challenging. I tried with the bridge tool, but it didn't give me the control I wanted, so I ended up with a custom solution, let's say. So I have the base model and I'm extracting the, this triangle in here just by clipping it and then I match size it to to the position I want to start the the copying of the layers since I'm going to copy scale them um, progressively and then uh, use a skin so I have the base shape 
uh, which is this triangle, then creating a point on the back of that shape, so I can easily create a bunch of points here and copy the triangles. For, for that, I'm just using manipulating the bounding box mean and, and the bounding box size, so I add the point at the back of the model. Then using point generate, I generate 32 points, you can generate more or less depending on the resolution you want in your model. And in here is where everything is happening. As you can see, if I show you the, the original position of that triangle, um, I can come in here and change the amount of points and it will always adjust to that position and distribute them equally. So I first take the bounding box max of the original position, so input 1 in here. Then the base pause will always be at 0. And I calculate the height, so I get the height. Then it's pretty simple, I just manipulate the Y position by adding the current point number, so 0, 1, 2 and so on, and divide it by the amount of points. So that way I get the normalized value. And then I just multiply it by the, the height. So I get, uh, this is not doing anything in here, forget about that. So I, I can come in here, change the amount of points as I told you, and it will always adjust. So hopefully that was clear. Then in here I'm copying two points, as you can see, since I generated these points to use a copy to point setup. And I'm also manipulating, so this by default will look something like this, and then I'm manipulating the p-scale. And the way I'm doing that is with an attribute adjust float set to bounding box along y. And then in here I can change the profile of that p-scale. So I can come in here and change any way I want it. In this case I wanted this flat look and then this uh, fall off in here. So then I'm just skinning the shape, so since we have these layers we can just skin and we get also polyfilling and we get something like this. So yeah, that's basically how I've done it, hopefully this was useful to you. So as you can see by this shape, I wanted to define quite well the sharp corners in here to have this polygonal look. And uh, I wanted to find these vertical edges and this is a known technique that I'm going to show you, but uh, that might some of you might not know, so I'm going to share it anyways. So I'm starting with a curve to define the profile, then revolve it, then in here in, I'm selecting in vertex mode 1 out of 2 and then just promoting two edges as you can see, and with this group range I can offset between the uh, horizontal, let's say, horizontal edges and the vertical ones, so just by using vertex. And this is quite a useful technique that some of you, well, might not know, so I'm sharing it anyways. So yeah, that's basically how I beveled those edges individually, and the same goes for the other part, as you can see. Then I'm also adding a bevel to the sharp edges to catch some light, but that's with another polybevel, as you can see. So yeah. So I have this particular model in here that I needed to divide into sections because it was easier to do, to have this rounded look in here and this polygon-like look in here on the bottom. So one problem uh, was the connection between the shapes. So I started with this polygonal look then I have this rounded look in here, and they would look disconnected. So besides subdividing it, it wouldn't really work that well, because I have this bevel to define the polygonal look. So I need somehow to, to round it with a falloff, so in the end we get something like this, as you can see. So it, it still has that polygon look and the beveled edge, but it falls off to connect with the original shape. And so we have this already sorted out, we have manipulated this shape and we have the rounded look and we start with this polygonal connection in here. Then I'm feeding that into a um, feedback loop and the first step I do is to, let me reset this, is to select the unshared points 
and create boundary, group, boundary groups. So this way I have a group for the top boundary and one for the bottom. I'm only interested in, in the top, so I'm promoting the first one to edges, so I can easily convert it to a line. So we get something like this. Then I'm resampling quite a bit to have enough resolution. Then I'm also extracting the this, this edge in here, converting it to curve, so the rounded one, and I'm ray projecting it. So I'm taking the polygonal one and ray projecting it to the to the rounded one. Then using a lattice in uh, points mode, as an input I take the the original shape. And, and as the, which input is it? The rest geometry, I take also the original edge. And as the third input, the deformed geometry, I'm taking the rounded uh, circle. And then if we have a look at the result, let me just select this. We start to get that uh, edge deformed into a rounded look. And if we do that for a few iterations with a subdivide in between, we get the, um, the rounded look. So if I go back one, two, three, and we get the correct result. This subdivide is just here if the um, if the iteration is bigger than than zero. So in the first iteration, I don't want to subdivide. So yeah, that's basically how I connected those two shapes. So nothing too crazy, but it's always uh, some nice trick to know. So as a last tip, I wanted to show you how I did this paneling in here on the hard edges. Uh, basically, by having this overlap look, so as they connect. So let me go in here. I'm using a chain sop to copy some, some geometry, which is just this paneling in here, as you can see. And I'm copying that to the edges of the geometry, the hard edges and then using a chain and I'm also so if I disable in here this rigid mask we get this sort of look uh, but I am creating instead a rigid mask which is just a manipulation of the of the bounding box of this geometry so I'm taking the bounding box Z since this is oriented towards the Z and then I'm mirroring that with this expression in here. And finally, I'm manipulating the that with the ramp. As you can see, that looks something like this. So it goes above and below, or above and below in here. And I'm saving that as a mask, which when fed into this, this chain sop, if I can show you. So in here, it will go below and on this part it will go above so i can come in here and manipulate this as you can see and we get that typical look so yeah nothing too crazy but hopefully that was useful so yeah guys this is basically it i hope you have enjoyed this video um you can grab some sample files with everything and the code that i showed in this video on my patreon alongside with exclusive tutorials and uh, all the project files from my videos. Also, if you want me to cover something specific about this project that I am doing, uh, I can do another video, so let me know in the comments. And yeah, that's basically it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.